Hello, I'm Madeline O'Toole, and today I have the task of introducing someone who is a mystery to us all, Elena Hanisian. For those of you who don't know Elena, you may see her as the classic cool girl. She plays the synth in a band, she can always be ha found hanging out at coffee shops, and she's laid back no matter what. The interesting thing is, as someone who does know Elena personally, I have discovered that she fully lives up to this classic cool girl she is known to be. Throughout the years, I have realized that her coolness is not just present in the obvious ways. It lies in her ability to prefer listening to others rather than being the center of attention, to approach stressful situations with composure, and to always have a brilliant tidbit to contribute to the English discussions. Elena is cool because she's someone who can be confident, passionate, respectful, and kind all at the same time. So, without further ado, I give you the girl who is inexplicably a fountain of useful information, who knows her moisturizers and has an irrational fear of ladybugs. I'm sure she will have something insightful to say to you today, so give it up for the coolest girl I know, Elena Catherine Hanisian. I take back everything I have ever said. That's right. Standing before you today, I recant every word I've spoken in the past 18 years. Now, having reset my narrative, these are essentially my first words. The first time I used this imaginary reset button of a phrase, I said something wrong in conversation with two friends of mine, and in playfully dramatic recovery, I burst out with, I take it back. I take back everything I've ever said. But this led me to question, what if I really could take back every word? I raised this question to my two peers. One returned with, people would probably like you more. <laughs> the other said, likely nothing, and went on to explain to me that according to speech theory, most of my speech acts in life have been constative rather than performative. But the latter response might hold some truth as, for many of the past years, I have stifled my words. I suppose this came to be after one too many miscommunications, stutters, and poorly articulated thoughts, leading me to decide that most of my thoughts were better left unsaid and that it wouldn't make a difference if I kept them to myself. After holding back in most conversations, including class discussions, talks with groups of friends, or other meaningful outlets of consciousness, what remained in my vernacular were mostly safe comments, such as, same, or I'm so tired, or I'm so hungry. And while, yes, I did say more than just meaningless chatter, truly I have kept my voice out of conversations that matter and fears of getting tongue-tied or embarrassing myself. I thought that by saying less, I would reduce the risk of saying something inarticulate and regretting opening my mouth. But to say something and take it back, if that were a possible feat, has been an appealing concept to me. In fact, it became somewhat of a catchphrase of mine to announce after the smallest misspoken communications that I'd take back everything I've ever said. If only I could erase all the times I wish I'd never opened my mouth, and those moments that turn into memories I painfully cringe at, I would be endlessly more at peace with my being. But no, after all, it's not possible to take back and erase the memory of the time I opened my mouth to say hi to Stuart's brother while drinking water, and proceeded to drool water all over myself in the middle of that Christmas party. And that's the bottom line. No matter what, you can't really take back what you've said. But as I have learned, that is no reason to be afraid to speak. The more I've contributed to conversation and allowed people access to my thoughts, the better people have gotten to know me, and through that, I've found relationships I wouldn't have if I'd kept my mouth shut. So, how did the change occur in me? When and how did I start using my voice? In all honesty, I don't really know. There's no formula for speaking up, no thermodynamic equation that relates a catalyst for voicing one's thoughts to breaking a bond of one's sealed lips. Perhaps it takes realizing that you do have important things to say. Not only that, but people are listening. Of course, this is easier to recognize when you can tell they're tuned in. Once I started to open up more and contribute to conversations within and outside of class, I did not expect to be approached by peers saying they liked what I had to say or that they found the thoughts I shared in discussion, discussion interesting. But the fact that they came off as a little surprised made me realize something. You shouldn't wait until you think someone is listening to speak your mind, because if you're waiting for a green light, you're not going to get one. Rather, Open yourself to speak, and someone will listen. As this year went on, I lost my catchphrase. I found that it was worth it to have slight regret over attempting to contribute without a fully formed thought in English class one day, as it may be just one day out of many days that I get to be a part of a meaningful conversation. 
I can't say I've become exponentially more eloquent, nor have I gained immense confidence in everything I say, but at least I have ownership of my words. So, remember a few minutes ago when I told you I'd take back everything I, I've ever said? I take that back too. Thank you.